The Story of Deirdre, Part 2. Celtic Folk Tale. Who is this beauty and where is she to be seen, when she was not seen before till you saw her, if you did see her? Well, I did see her, said the hunter, but, if I did, no man else can see her unless he get directions from me as to where she is dwelling. And will you direct me to where she dwells, and the reward of your directing me will be as good as the reward of your message, said the king. Well, I will direct you, O king, although it is likely that this will not be what they want, said the hunter. Conachar, king of Ulster, sent for his nearest kinsmen, and he told them of his intent, though early rose the song of the birds mid the rocky caves and the music of the birds in the grove, earlier than that did Conachar, king of Ulster, rise, with his little troop of dear friends, in the delightful twilight of the fresh and gentle May, the dew was heavy on each bush and flower and stem, as they went to bring Deirdre forth from the green knoll where she stayed, many a youth was there who had a lithe leaping and lissom step when they started whose step was faint, failing, and faltering when they reached the bothy on account of the length of the way and roughness of the road. Yonder, now, down in the bottom of the glen is the bothy where the woman dwells, but I will not go nearer than this to the old woman, said the hunter. Conachar with his band of kinsfolk went down to the green knoll where Deirdre dwelt and he knocked at the door of the bothy. The nurse replied, No less than a king's command and a king's army could put me out of my bothy tonight, and I should be obliged to you, were you to tell who it is that wants me to open my bothy door. It is I, Conachar, king of Ulster. When the poor woman heard who was at the door, she rose with haste and let in the king and all that could get in of his retinue. When the king saw the woman that was before him that he had been in quest of, he thought he never saw in the course of the day nor in the dream of night a creature so fair as Deirdre and he gave his full heart's weight of love to her. Deirdre was raised on the topmost of the hero's shoulders and she and her foster mother were brought to the court of King Conachar of Ulster. With the love that Conachar had for her, he wanted to marry Deirdre right off there and then, will she nil she marry him, but she said to him, I would be obliged to you if you will give me the respite of a year and a day. He said, I will grant you that, hard though it is, if you will give me your unfailing promise that you will marry me at the year's end. And she gave the promise. Conachar got for her a woman teacher and merry modest maidens fair that would lie down and rise with her, that would play and speak with her. Deirdre was clever in maidenly duties and wifely understanding, and Conachar thought he never saw with bodily eye a creature that pleased him more. Deirdre and her women companions were one day out on the hillock behind the house enjoying the scene, and drinking in the sun's heat. What did they see coming but three men a journeying? Deirdre was looking at the men that were coming, and wondering at them. When the men neared them, Deirdre remembered the language of the huntsmen, and she said to herself that these were the three sons of Uusnek, and that this was now is, he having what was above the bend of the two shoulders above the men of Aranal. The three brothers went past without taking any notice of them, without even glancing at the young girls on the hillock. What happened but that love for now is struck the heart of Deirdre, so that she could not but follow after him. She girded up her raiment and went after the men that went past the base of the knoll, leaving her women attendants there. Alan and Arden had heard of the woman that Conachar, king of Ulster, had with him, and they thought that, if Nowys, their brother, saw her, he would have her himself more especially as she was not married to the king, they perceived the woman coming, and called on one another to hasten their step as they had a long distance to travel, and the dusk of night was coming on, they did so. She cried, Nowys, son of Uusnek, will you leave me? What piercing, shrill cry is that the most melodious my ear ever heard, and the shrillest that ever struck my heart of all the cries I ever heard, it is anything else but the wail of the wave swans of Conachar, said his brothers. No. Yonder is a woman's cry of distress, said Nowys, and he swore he would not go further until he saw from whom the cry came, and Nowys turned back. Nowys and Deirdre met, and Deirdre kissed Nowys three times, and a kiss each to his brothers. With the confusion that she was in, Deirdre went into a crimson blaze of fire, and her color came and went as rapidly as the movement of the aspen by the stream side. Nowys thought he never saw a fairer creature, and now is gave Deirdre the love that he never gave to thing, to vision, or to creature but to herself. Then now is placed Deirdre on the topmost height of his shoulder, and told his brothers to keep up their pace, and they kept up their pace, 
Now is thought that it would not be well for him to remain in Aaron on account of the way in which Conachar, king of Ulster, his uncle's son, had gone against him because of the woman, though he had not married her, and he turned back to Alba, that is, Scotland. He reached the side of Loch Ness and made his habitation there. He could kill the salmon of the torrent from out his own door, and the deer of the grey gorge from out his window. Now is in Deirdre and Allen and Arden dwelt in a tower, and they were happy so long a time as they were there. To be continued.